Well, good afternoon, everyone. And if you can't tell already, my TED Talk is going to be a little bit different format than some of the speeches you've heard earlier today. Um, now, as mentioned, I spend the winter months in school here at South Dakota State University. But during the summers, I have a very different job. I get to fight fires for the National Park Service. So, today, I'm here to tell you about some of my experiences with firefighting and how those have affected me in other ways. Now, you know, got all kinds of cool pictures I could show you. Got a couple stories I'd like to tell. And got a couple lessons that I've learned and I'd like to share with you. So, to start things off, I'd like to show you a picture of the crew that I work on. We're based out of Badlands National Park in western South Dakota. Small crew in numbers, but we cover a pretty big region in our local area. And in addition to our local assignments, we actually um, go out nationally available to the western United States during the busy months of the fire season um, to different fires. One thing that I've really enjoyed doing on these fire crews is I've had the opportunity to travel a lot. This particular picture was taken in Colorado. I've been to New Mexico and Arizona on firefighting assignments, um, and I've also spent a lot of time closer to home in the Black Hills of South Dakota. This is one of my favorite photographs of me on a firefighting crew. Pretty awesome scenery behind me, but the coolest part about this picture, actually if you look right here where the laser pointer is, you kind of have to look close. There's a couple little white dots there. Those are actually our pickups where we started our hike that day. Um, this is a pretty tough job, you know, all this gear that I carried out here with me, that's something that I'd carry with me on a normal day. Um, pretty tough physical conditions, but I really enjoy that type of challenge. Something that's been really unique for a small town South Dakota kid, I've had the opportunity to work on helicopters and around helicopters. So I've seen helicopters from all sorts of different angles as you can see here. Uh, this chopper is about to do a water drop on the burning area in the background. I've been directly below flying helicopters. And this little dot here is actually a helicopter. I've been above flying helicopters. Um, we stopped here on, this, on the side of this mountain in Colorado, um, about 10,000 feet in elevation, uh, to have our sandwiches for lunch. We looked down and there was a helicopter working on the same fire that we were on on the lower part of the mountain. So if you want to know a good way to spice up that boring sandwich, uh, maybe you should try this. You know, in addition to some of the excitement that we see on these crews, there are also some pretty peaceful moments as captured here in this photograph of one of my crew members taking a break during a long work day. And really, you can find beauty in some of the strangest places. A fire just burned through this area probably a half hour, maybe an hour um, before I took this photograph. But, you know, even though the landscape, the landscape has been changed dramatically, it's still very interesting and intriguing. So, we've seen a couple of cool pictures, heard a couple stories. What the heck's the point and how does this relate to TEDx Brookings? Well, everything that I have learned on these fire crews can be summarized by showing one picture and using one sentence to describe that picture. <laughs> Folks, sometimes we have to suck at things before we can be good at them. Now, I'm not super proud of this photograph of me. Actually, I don't show it very often. I wonder why I don't show it very often. But, um, you know, for the backstory of what happened, this is one of my first firefighting assignments in Colorado. Um, you know, one of the first times I'd been out, I was working with some of the toughest men I've ever met in my life. Simply put, I wasn't in good enough physical condition to handle the conditions I was working in. I had to quit work early on this day um, just because I couldn't handle it. Not something I'm really proud of. So compare that picture to one that we saw earlier. Do those look like the same person to you? Not really. You know what I think when I see those pictures side by side? I think, man, I'm really glad that I didn't give up. Because believe it or not, that picture of me standing here on the edge of the cliff, that was taken two days after the picture of me laying there on the ground. 
just 48 hours later. It's amazing how little time that was and how big a difference it was. And you know, since that time, I've been really glad that I didn't give up because if I had, after those challenges in my first season, I wouldn't have a picture like this taken along the shores of the Colorado River in the bottom of the Grand Canyon. I also would not have a picture from the top of the Grand Canyon. This is a crew that I worked on. Um, this picture is actually taken on the 4th of July. Talk about a cool present for a firefighter getting to go to the Grand Canyon Skywalk on the 4th of July. You can see me right here in the red shirt. Um, I guess I like to be different. Only guy with a red shirt out there. So folks, my message here today is short and it's simple. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter what type of fire you're fighting. If you're going through a hard time, don't quit. Don't give up. Don't give in. You never know what might happen. I wound up in some places that I never thought I'd be in because I wasn't afraid to keep going. I never thought I'd be standing at 10,000 feet on the side of a mountain backing my favorite team. So I'd like to leave you all with a question here today. Where will you be and what will you be doing? Thank you all.